everybody, this is Kevin, and I'm on a Zoom chat with Andrew Norris and Elizabeth Halston. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Liz. Hi there. And we are going to start talking about summer. And as everybody will know, we've been doing a series of seasons to do with poetry. And Andrew and Liz have sent over to me their poems that they've chosen for summer. And of course, after this one, it'll be the last of the, of the four seasons, but I'm sure we'll find something else that we can talk about, poems and things like that. Scope is endless. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And yeah, and, and, and hopefully we can encourage more people to, to get involved. Um, so let me, let me first of all, Liz, let me go to you um, about your poem and what you've chosen for, for this particular summer season. Right. Well, I suppose um, I started with what seasons really mean to me. And one of the things that, that is important is colour. Mm -hmm. Each season has a different colour. I mean, we, with winter, we think of white and grey and black of trees. And spring is always that lovely fresh green and pale primrose colour. And the summer is, is, is again, a glowing, warm, yellow, golden light. Yes, um, and mm. autumn is is what it, we all know, which is the russets and the greens. And and because we were talking about choosing a poem for summer, I chose a poem that <coughs> actually talks about the colour, mm -hmm. and the whole poem is about gold, the golden colour, and the gold itself. And mm -hmm. that's where I came to. Although very early on in the poem, it says something about late September, but we know that late September often means an Indian summer. An and, Indian and, summer. And, yeah. and the, the seasons always cross over, <coughs> don't they? Yeah, they do. And so that's yeah. why I, I came to choose the poem that I have, hmm. uh, which is um, by Carol Ann Duffy. Um, I've chosen one of her poems before. And it's, it's called Mrs. Midas. Oh. And it hmm. is, that's the one I chose. And it was for the colour that I, I went for. Okay. Mrs. Midas by Carol Ann Duffy. It was late September. I'd just poured a glass of wine, begun to unwind while the vegetables cooked, the kitchen filled with the smell of itself, relaxed, its steamy breath gently blanching the windows, so I opened one. Then, with my fingers, wiped the other's glass like a brow. He was standing under the pear tree, snapping a twig. Now the garden was long and the visibility poor, the way the dark of the ground seemed to drink the light of the sky, but that twig in his hand was gold, and then he plucked a pear from a branch. We grew fondant or tom, and it sat in his palm like a light bulb. On. I thought to myself, is he putting fairy lights in the tree? He came into the house. The doorknobs gleamed. He drew the blinds. You know the mind, I thought of the field of the cloth of gold and of Miss MacReady. He sat in that chair like a king on a burnished throne. The look on his face was strange, wild, vain. I said, what in the name of God is going on? He started to laugh. I served up the meal. For starters, corn on the cob. Within seconds, he was spitting out the teeth of the rich. He toyed with his spoon, then mine, then with the knives, the forks. He asked, where was the wine? I poured the shaking hand, a fragrant bone dry white from Italy, then watched as he picked up the glass goblet, golden chalice, drank. It was then that I started to scream. He sank to his knees. After we'd both calmed down, I finished the wine on my own, hearing him out. I made him sit on the other side of the room and keep his hands to himself. I locked the cat in the cellar. I moved the phone. I, the toilet, I didn't mind. I couldn't believe my ears. 
how he'd had a wish. Look, we all have wishes, granted. But who has wishes, granted? Him! Do you know about gold? It feeds no one. Our um, soft, untarnishable slakes, no thirst. He tried to light a cigarette. I gazed, entranced, as the blue flame played on its luteinous stem. At least, I said, you'll be able to give up smoking for good. Separate beds. In fact, I put a chair against my door. Near petrified, he was below, turning the spare room into the tomb of Tutankhamun. You see, we were passionate then, in those halcyon days, unwrapping each other rapidly like presents, fast food. But now I feared his honeyed embrace, the kiss that would turn my lips to a work of art. And who, when it comes to the crunch, can live with a heart of gold. That night I dreamt I bore his child, its perfect oar limbs, its little tongue, like a precious latch, its amber eyes holding their pupils like flies. My dream milk burned in my breasts. I woke to the streaming sun. So he had to move out. We had a caravan in the wilds in a glade of its own. I drove him up under the cover of dark. He sat in the back. And then I came home. The woman who married the fool who wished for gold. At first I visited odd times, parking the car a good way off, then walking. He knew you were getting close. Golden trout on the grass. One day a hare hung from a larch. A beautiful lemon mistake, and then his footprints glistening next to the river's path. He was thin, delirious, hearing, he said, the music of Pan from the woods, listen. That was the last straw. What gets me now is not the idiocy or greed, but lack of thought for me, pure selfishness. I sold the contents of the house and came down here. I think of him in certain lights, dawn, late afternoon, and once a bowl of apples stopped me dead. I miss most, even now, his hands, his warm hands on my skin, his touch. And Andrew, and it's out to you and the same reason? Well, I, I followed a pattern that I started for spring where I chose two poems with a very similar title uh, dealing with harvest. You know, I've been in the village most of the summer growing things. Now we're starting to harvest. And um, uh, a week or so ago, we had a rare occasion happened, and that was a combine harvester came trundling up the road to go into the valley between myself and my neighbor. Um, the land at our end of the village is not very good for large scale cultivation. So it's not very often you see a combine harvester. So it was quite an event and I filmed it and I, I will have an, a new village film out on Sunday, just of the, the, um, the barley being harvested. And then the barley is used uh, for animal feed, but for a particular Croatian dish called kasha, which is like, um, pearl barley porridge with vegetables. It, it's a great, a great dish. So I've chosen two poems with very similar titles, one English, one American, but the Englishman, uh, Charles Tomlinson, has acknowledged a debt to William Carlos Williams, the American poet. So um, I hope you will enjoy seeing those. And I'll talk a little bit about, about them if you like later yeah, on. Yeah, oh, no, if, if you want to continue, just tell us a, bit, a little bit more about them now. Well, Charles Tomlinson is a, a poet that I came across really by chance. He was recommended to me. And I like the fact that his work is quite intellectual, but quite meditative. His feelings through his ideas. Um, he engages a lot with landscape. And um, the poem that I chose, which is called Harvest, 
It's about revisiting a field after it had been cut and the hay had turned into bales and the bales were stacked up to look like, like a henge. Mm. And how um, visiting that same field at night and seeing these henges, the, these bales, it, it just transformed the landscape very much. Harvest by Charles Tomlinson. After the hay was baled and stacked in henges, we walked through the circles in the moonlit field. The moon was hidden from us by the ranges of hills that enclosed the meadows hay had filled. But its light lay one suffusing undertone that drew out the day and changed the pace of time. It slowed to the pulse of our passing feet upon gleanings the baler had left on the ground to rhyme with the colour of the silhouettes that arose, dark like the guardians of a frontier strayed across, into this in-between of time composed, centuries of Avalon, these megaliths of grass. Yet it was time that brought us to this place, time that had ripened the grasses harvested here, Time will tell us tomorrow that we paced last night in a field that is no longer there. And yet it was, and time, the literalist, the sense and the scent of its woven in time's changes, cannot put by that sweetness, that persistence, after the hay was baled and stacked in the hinges. And the second poem by William Carlos Williams, he was a, a poet who was very economical with his words. They're very, very short. And he has a structure which when you see the poem, straight away it's by him. And as an example of the, his economy of words, if you look at the last two stanzas of the poem, uh, let me just read it out. He's talking about this young chap who's resting after working by a tree and he, he makes an observation that his um, flies his button is undone oh. and he's sleeping and the other side of the tree there are the women who have brought him his food and the the penultimate stanza says where shade whose shade carelessly he does not share now if there was a full stop there that sentence he does not share would refer to the shade that he's resting under but it has another word the so that sentence he does not share the and then it continues in the next stanza the, the resting center of the workday world and he used one sentence which as you read it 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 drags it into the second stanza to be applicable to the second stanza and i find that economy of language economy of words where one sentence can is uh, torn between two stanzas. I, I find it a really remarkable mm. use of language. It, yeah, is that is that something you think that he's he's purposely done that? Yes, I do because he is very economical. Mm. And you know, if you were to write out some of his poems just in one line, it would be just like an average sentence. But some of the lines are just one word, mm. like or two words, like whose shade carelessly one word he does not share the resting one word center of two words their workday world referring to these women three words it, it, the economy there is, is remarkable yeah, and yeah. he this poem is from a collection he wrote called uh, pictures by Bruegel pictures of Bruegel and he won a Pulitzer for it so he's a very well esteemed poet in his most famous poem is about um, a red wheelbarrow. Oh, have right. to look that one up. Yeah. William Carlos Williams. Pictures from Bruegel. Number seven. The corn harvest. Summer. The painting is organized about a young reaper enjoying his noonday rest, completely relaxed from his morning labors, sprawled, in fact, sleeping, unbuttoned on his back. The women have brought him his lunch, perhaps a spot of wine. They gather gossiping under a tree, 
whose shade, carelessly, he does not share the resting center of their workday world. I think we're having a little bit of um, internet connection problems, but you keep freezing a little bit, Andrew, so we'll just see how things go. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and Liz, what about yourself? Do you, do you dissect poems the same as Andrew, if that's the right way of putting it? Yes, I do. I mean, <coughs> not always. Um, sometimes because, generally speaking, because they're just... The purpose of them is the simplicity, I suppose, is the easiest way of putting it. And you don't want to um, over-evaluate things of, of that nature because it destroys what they are. But mm. then, um, particularly, I think, that, and this relates to the poem that I've chosen um, this time, that re refers to an event, uh, it's, um, it's Greek mythology, basically. And to know that you've brought something very ordinary and mundane and every day, just like an ordinary late summer's day, connect it with something that was written so many thousands of years ago mm. that still holds good across the world, mm. um, I find fascinating. And, and I think that, but this was a modern take on it. And when you mm. hear the poem and you know the title, you will see exactly what I'm saying. And it's, um, no. <coughs> So, yes. so, so when we've got, well, this is a question to but the same question to both of you. When you when you start looking into the different seasons that we've done, when you when you're trying to choose a poem, do you find it easy, or do you do you have an idea of straight away of who you want to go to for a specific poem? I must admit, I had a little bit of difficulty. I was going through all my books, looking at the index for word for the word summer. Um, and then when I found the Carlos William Carlos uh, poem, William Carlos Williams poem, I, I then changed my tact and I looked for the word harvest because it's an occupation for this Ooh. period of time, an occupation that I, I've been involved in in the village. Yeah. So in that sense, it was uh, then it became easier. Ooh. And I wanted to choose a poet which people hadn't heard of before, Tomlinson. Um, because I, I, I want, you know, I like to give more exposure to lesser known poems. Yeah, yeah. But cool. um, when, when, I, when I found a selection of poems, what I would do is I would take the book with me and I would go out walking with, with, with Zorro. And as I would walk, I would read the poem and try and, I like the rhythm of poems. And particularly uh, where a sentence doesn't end at the end of the line, but carries on through to the next line. And I've tried to emphasize that in, in a subtle way when I read uh, his poem for the video I sent you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about yourself, Liz? Um, it depends, obviously, on, on, on what one is asked to do. And for you, uh, you were asked to do with the seasons. So mm. as I said at the beginning of all this, I mean, color has a great deal to do with it. And I've had an enormous, uh, affinity, I suppose, with poetry ever since I was a child, quite a small child. Um, but when I was at drama school, I did actually win the, the, the poetry prize for speaking oh. poetry, <laughs> which is rather nice. And, uh, um, and so that, I, I, that obviously takes it to another dimension if you're, if you're talking about it as a performer, mm. which we were. I mean, that was one of the reasons why we were doing the, the thing. And um, so the performance element, I suppose, has always lived with me mm. unconsciously when I was a child, but certainly forced upon me, they were very pleasurably when mm. I was older. And um, so to me, poetry is something that, yes, of course you can read it to yourself and, and I'm saying everybody should do that, you know, but it is also a performance thing because it is mm. always an exaggeration or a, a special area of, um, an aspect of perfectly normal or ordinary things that are happening, sure. either good or bad or sad. And Andrew was talking about, you know, harvest and, and, and living off the land and all that kind of thing. Mm. And with me on this occasion, as I started saying, originally it was the colour that, that attracted it to me. It could be anything that attracts you to it. And sure. it is um, something special on top of one's ordinary observation and your 
you're allowed to be that with poetry. You're allowed to be a bit flowery, if I can say, <laughs> and a bit um, exaggerated, and, and and that's part of its charm, I think. Well, since we've started, sorry, go on, go on Andrew. No, I, I agree absolutely. Yeah. Well, since we've started doing this, oh crikey, we it's just warned me we've got ten minutes left. Right. So we've got to, so we've got to be careful. Ten minutes. So that's going to be uh, okay. Um, since we've started doing these, I've, what's really interested me is the different ways that you don't, you both do your poems. Um, Andrew does the, the, the way that he does them with um, the effect of video and things like that and, and the way he reads them. And so that is something that really interests me to try and help me improve my videos, but it doesn't seem to, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, then, but, then, but, but well, then with Liz, um, when she records herself doing, in my mind, when I'm watching her, she's, because of your acting background, you're acting the poem, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and, and the, t the, the two, <laughs> the different ways you two, you, you, you both do them. It's something I find really interesting. Mm. Um, and, and, and I think it's good because rather than having two people that do things exactly the same way, to have that difference is, is I think, really, really interesting. And hopefully, well, yeah. for everybody even, else as well. Even yeah, the interpretation is different. Think, Andrew, I mean, I think that the, the, the two ways of, uh, of dealing with it are, are there. It includes everybody, you know, because yeah. some people do like the performance and some people just like to absorb themselves in what the text is and and, and listen to it and, yeah and yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's great but I'm, I'm looking forward to putting this video together um and, and i'm going to be doing that over the, the next two or three days and and because i know liz has sent me some photographs and i'm going to try and, in, and put them into sort of cutaways and see I, if i, I did try to do it myself <laughs> and things like that really am I? It's, um, with, but, the, yeah. with the editing suite that I've got, I'm hopefully, I think Andrew uses the same as me, the Da Vinci one. Um, you, you can you can put cutaways in and things like. That. So I will it's try. And, sorry, Andrew. It is an amazing program and, and a free program. It's and a free program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get my head around a lot of different aspects of that, and and because I'm quite slow with learning these things, I just find it very frustrating. But. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try and interpret the photographs that Liz has sent me a few um, into, <laughs> into the video. Um, so, so that's that's going to be interesting to do. Hello, my name's Andrew Norris, and I'm just lying in a meadow in Croatia. If, like me, you've just watched Kevin's latest video, do give him a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please consider subscribing. Click the bell notification and you'll be kept informed of any future videos that Kevin uploads. Thank you.